When Lisa's parents chose to favor one daughter over the other, their decision left enduring scars, Lisa's upbringing was a constant reminder of her unwanted status, born out of circumstance rather than intention, she was seen as an inconvenience from the moment she arrived, her parents having envisioned a different path for themselves, despite securing stable careers, their resentment towards Lisa lingered, viewing her as a hindrance to their ambitions though her grandparents offered warmth and affection, their age limited their ability to care for her fully, reluctantly, Lisa was returned to her loveless home, where hired help replaced genuine parental concern, even in their presence, her parents remained distant, leaving her largely in the hands of a hired caregiver who, though kind, could never fill the void of maternal love. The arrival of Lisa's sister, Veronica, only widened the chasm between them. Showered with affection and material comforts, Veronica became the embodiment. Of her parents' love and aspirations, the stark contrast in treatment inflicted deep emotional wounds on Lisa, exacerbated by the loss of her beloved grandparents, who had been her unwavering source of love and stability. The demise of her grandparents delivered an additional devastating blow to Lisa's already difficult existence. She turned to her parents and sister for affection after losing their unshakable devotion, but she was met with more apathy, Lisa found that she had a strong spirit. Within her despite everything, she found solace in her studies as a means of numbing the hurt of being rejected at home, her hard effort paid off, when she did exceptionally well in her classes and graduated from college with honors, an accomplishment she was proud of. Even though her family didn't recognize it, Lisa found joy and purpose when she started a job as a photographer. From capturing the beauty of wildlife in Kenya to photographing the vivid hues of Indian festivities, her photography not only offered amazing chances but also facilitated connections with individuals from a variety of backgrounds. While her family remained disinterested in her achievements, Lisa found solace and belonging among fellow creatives and adventurers she encountered during her travels. These connections transcended borders and cultures, teaching her to appreciate the beauty of human diversity. Despite the complexities of her family dynamic, Lisa's experiences fueled her determination to embrace life. To the fullest, vowing never to deny herself the pleasures that had been absent in her childhood, having carved out a life of opulence and independence, Lisa indulged in luxuries that were once beyond her reach, a lavish hilltop mansion, fine dining at Michelin-starred restaurants, and extravagant globetrotting adventures, her family remained conspicuously absent from these experiences. But Lisa had long ceased seeking their approval, embracing her newfound freedom, she reconnected with the nanny who had shown her genuine love during her darkest days, treating her to regular spa days and thoughtful gifts. For Lisa, independence was not just a dream, it was her reality, focused on honing her artistic craft and capturing the world through her lens. She had attained not only financial success but also a life that resonated with her deepest desires. However, beneath the surface of her blissful existence, a stark contrast emerged, the financial woes plaguing her parents and sister living. Beyond their means, Lisa's family squandered money on extravagant shopping sprees and luxurious vacations, oblivious to the mounting debts they incurred forced to confront their unsustainable lifestyle, they downsized from their lavish abode to a modest apartment, grappling with the harsh reality of their financial recklessness, desperate for assistance, they turned to Lisa, initially evoking her compassion as she generously extended financial aid, however, Lisa's benevolence soon gave way to Suspicion when her family's demands for more money persisted, digging deeper, she uncovered Veronica's social media profile, revealing a facade of financial distress shattered by images of extravagant family vacations, betrayed and incensed by their deceit, Lisa severed ties with her manipulative family, refusing to be exploited any further, though they attempted to manipulate her through guilt and obligation. Lisa recognized the toxicity of their relationships and resolved to protect herself. From further exploitation, true relationships, she realized, were built on mutual respect and genuine connection, not on manipulation and deceit. Lisa's family had to face difficult realities in the following months as they dealt with the fallout from their wasteful spending. After experiencing humility, Veronica decided to work as a waiter and gave up some of her most valuable clothing, Lisa's parents. In the meantime, said goodbye to their last car, a symbol of their failing wealth, there. 
conceit and inexperience proved damaging in more modest areas, and their once proud standing in the community began to disintegrate as they faced being fired from long-held jobs, with Lisa's ties cut, their calls for help went unanswered, leaving them penniless and stripped of their privileges even in the face of disaster. Lisa never wavered in her determination to overcome her turbulent childhood, she pressed on, determined to create a life shaped by her own work and goals, refusing to give in. To hopelessness, she walked the route to achievement with unshakable determination, finding comfort in the taste of hard-won triumph, released from the poisonous bonds of her past, Lisa celebrated her newfound freedom and looked forward to a future free from the toxic influences of her family. When one considers this amazing voyage, questions arise regarding the strength and resiliency needed to cut ties with one's own family. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. In a remarkable turn of events, a mother's unwavering determination led to the miraculous reunion with her presumed dead daughter in a chilling morgue. This extraordinary tale began when Analia, 30 years old and 6 months pregnant, faced the daunting news of her daughter's imminent birth via caesarean section due to medical complications, however, fate had other plans, for days past the initial diagnosis, Analia endured a strenuous, spontaneous vaginal birth that lasted hours, amidst the exhaustion and joy of her newborn's arrival, a nurse entered the room, bearing devastating news about the baby's demise, shocked and confused, Analia recounted how medical negligence plagued her journey from the very beginning despite Argentina's strides in enacting laws to safeguard women's rights, obstetric violence remained an unspoken reality, unaware of the looming tragedy, Analia, a homemaker from Chaco, found herself thrust into a national spotlight as her story unfolded, tragically, the medical team failed to diagnose a severe pregnancy complication known as total occlusive placenta previa, when Analia's daughter fought for life in the tail end of the pregnancy, negligence overshadowed her care, dismissive remarks from medical staff, like, you already have enough children, only added to Analia's anguish in a desperate bid to save her daughter. Analia's instincts kicked in as she refused to accept the grim prognosis, her persistence led her to the morgue, where against all odds, she discovered her baby alive, crying out for her mother's embrace, this gripping narrative serves as a poignant reminder of the enduring strength of a mother's love and the urgent need to address systemic failures within the healthcare system alone and utterly exhausted, I found myself retching bile, overcome by fatigue, desperate to aid in my daughter's birth, I was rendered helpless, at 10.20 on the morning of April 3rd. Amidst the haze of recovery, a doctor approached me, inquiring about the father to record on my baby's paperwork. Relieved, I directed him to find the father outside, believing all was well, however, the calm was short-lived, another figure emerged, bearing the crushing news of my daughter's supposed demise, I entered a state of shock as I followed protocol, signing papers and navigating the bureaucratic aftermath, despite my then-husband's prior knowledge, the family remained unaware, shielding them from the grim reality, what ensued was an interminable afternoon of grief, a stark contrast to the joyous anticipation that should have filled the air, by 10 o'clock that night, a flicker of defiance stirred within me, compelling me to bid farewell to my daughter accompanied by my husband, brother, and sister-in-law, I traversed the hospital corridors, my heart heavy with sorrow, when the refrigeration chamber yielded the small drawer containing my daughter's form, a collective plea arose, urging me to spare myself the haunting sight, however, driven by a need to confront the truth, I disregarded their pleas, with trembling hands, my husband pried open the white wooden box, revealing a sight that would forever sear itself into my memory, the frost-kissed, purple form of my daughter lay before me, her tiny features obscured by a veil of frost in a moment of surreal disbelief, I reached out, grasping her miniature hand, when I uncovered her face, her bright eyes met mine, and a feeble cry pierced the silence, reminiscent of a kitten's mule, stunned, those around me recoiled, unable to comprehend what they were witnessing, convinced I had succumbed to delusion, I was urged to relinquish my hold, however, I persisted, my maternal instincts propelling me forward, ignoring the incredulous stares, I cradled my daughter to my chest, her icy touch serving as a jarring reminder of the miracle unfolding before me, through tear-stained eyes, 
I whispered assurances of life and love. A fervent pledge to nurture the fragile spark of existence entrusted to my care, and amidst the chaos of that fateful night, a mother's unwavering resolve prevailed, breathing life into the depths of despair, Anelia recounts the aftermath of the miraculous events that unfolded, painting a picture of resilience amidst adversity, despite the doctor's attempts to rationalize the inexplicable, Anelia found herself fighting for her daughter's life in a state of critical condition, hooked up to a respirator. That fateful day marked the beginning of her daughter's journey into the realm of miracles. Earning her nationwide recognition, however, the saga was far from over, even as the spotlight dimmed, the drama persisted within the confines of the hospital walls, faced with the audacity of falsifying her daughter's birth certificate, Analia stood her ground, refusing to succumb to deceit, amidst the chaos, tragedy struck once more as the father of Luz fell victim to theft, adding another layer of turmoil to their already tumultuous ordeal eight days later, amidst the fragile balance between Life and death, Luz suffered her first cardiac arrest, for Analia, it was a harrowing ordeal, a painful reminder of the fragility of existence, when the hospital staff grappled with their own culpability, Analia found herself cast in an unfamiliar role, transitioning from victim to antagonist in their eyes, it was then that Analia's aunt, residing in Rosario, took matters into her own hands, penning a heartfelt email to a television channel, shedding light on the events that transpired, in a matter of days, journalists descended upon the hospital, thrusting Luz's story onto the front pages of newspapers nationwide, questions lingered in the air, highlighting the systemic failures and lack of protocols that had endangered Luz's life, however, amidst the outcry, a glimmer of hope emerged as Luz defied the odds, surviving a second cardiac arrest, transferred to the Italian hospital in Buenos Aires. Luz faced yet another daunting prognosis, with medical experts predicting only a fraction of her brain functioning, faced with the dilemma of palliative care, Analia grappled with the ethical implications, torn between the law of dignified death and her evangelical beliefs, undeterred, Analia embarked on a journey of unwavering devotion, witnessing Luz's gradual progress and transformation. From overcoming infections to undergoing procedures like the placement of a gastric button and tracheotomy, Luz's resilience mirrored her mother's unwavering determination when the media frenzy subsided, the government's promises of support remained unfulfilled, leaving Analia to navigate the challenges of everyday life without the sanctuary of a promised home. Despite the hardships, Analia's steadfast love and commitment to her daughter remained unwavering, a testament to the enduring power of maternal devotion. Our Buenos Aires accommodations for two and a half months included remodeling our house to handle Luz's electrodependency, but during that first storm, the truth of our vulnerability became painfully apparent, Water leaked into Luz's room when the electricity went off, endangering her life because she is an electrodependent person, desperate to keep myself from drowning. I tried reverse mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing without access to the life-saving apparatus. I had been seeing the father of all my children for 12 years, but in the months after Luz and I returned home, he was too busy taking care of the kids, leaving me to handle the legal issues on my own. Despite all of our difficulties, the kindness of Buenos Aires residents gave us much-needed help by donating clothing and necessary medical supplies that were unavailable in Chaco, but government support was insufficient, providing me with a pitiful allowance of 2,000 pesos a month and requiring detailed accounting of all expenses, I complied, even though it was unbearably hot in December. But all I got in return was a bunch of empty promises and opportunities for the governor to get pictures in. An effort to provide Luz with a better future. I started a fundraising campaign with the goal of obtaining 60,000 pesos for stem cell therapy in China, I went above and beyond to get money, even though the scientific community doubted the effectiveness of such medicines, I sold lottery bonds and gave out bank account information when Luz was a year and two months old. I traveled with her to Buenos Aires to complete passport formalities and continue fundraising efforts, by then, I had found solace in a new relationship with one of Luz's doctors, whose support bolstered my resolve amidst our struggles, tragedy struck once more when my sister, living in Rosario, was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer, when we made our way back from Buenos Aires, 
Partake compounded, leaving Luz vulnerable to a generalized infection that threatened her fragile existence, despite our best efforts. The media's scrutiny intensified, unfairly placing blame on me for allegedly neglecting necessary precautions. Their accusations painted a distorted picture, oblivious to the battles fought behind closed doors, contrary to their claims, I had no access to specialized medical care or transportation options, however, amidst the adversity, my determination to safeguard Luz's well-being remained unwavering, a beacon of hope amidst the storm, I felt helpless when they put it there for the marketing picture. The baby was sent to a Rosario hospital, they told me, I had a feeling she wouldn't make it this time, I told myself, the light is fading slowly, while I was there, well, mom, I'm here if you want to keep battling, but go quietly if you're tired and ready to depart, I said in a whisper to her, the machine beeped twice after those words, just as in the movies, the signs of miracles had vanished, I clothed her and carried her to the morgue in my arms on June 23, 2013, though nothing seemed weird to me anymore, the people there still stared at me as if I was crazy, I held her the entire wake, wondering, and pondering what may have been, maybe after the death of the light. Justice would awaken once more, in a civil case filed against the provincial state of Chaco and the two involved doctors, Analia's mother and her ex-husband, along by Jose Victorino Acuna, their family lawyer, sought 15, 2 million pesos for damages and moral anguish resulting from medical malpractice, the attorney said, it sounds like the script for a horror movie, however, a decision on this tragic tale has not yet been made, tragic events later on, Analia's brother lost his vocal cords, and her mother was told she had throat cancer, he felt like he had a frozen bottle against his chest as he ran from the morgue with the light, he later suffered a head damage in a motorcycle accident, which rendered his memory of the incident unrecognizable, my life will never be the same, said Analia who now makes her living by cooking and selling meals. I believe Luke came to fulfill a purpose, and amidst all the ugliness, there's always a glimmer of hope. A young guy once confessed to me that he had considered suicide, but that thought was modified when he saw my daughter's intense survival fight. He said, if she can fight so hard, how can I not? I have no idea what happened to that young man but telling this story makes me feel better, that's all about this story and now let's watch another similar story. This man had anxiously awaited the arrival of his son for nine long months. Assured during the pregnancy that their child was perfectly healthy, he and his wife were nonetheless filled with nervous anticipation when they awaited the first glimpse of their baby. However, when their son was finally born and placed in his father's arms, a moment of unease struck, the boy gazed back at his father with an unsettling intensity, prompting the father to notice a troubling detail, unlike most newborns who cry incessantly, this child cried only when in his father's presence, initially dismissing it as a triviality, the father's concern grew as he realized the gravity of the situation. Setting his son down in the crib, he hurriedly summoned doctors and nurses, his heart pounding with fear, what had gone wrong during the birth? Jeffrey, 31, had eagerly anticipated fatherhood, though he and his girlfriend had harbored doubts about their readiness to care for a child, however, after numerous attempts, the joy of impending parenthood overwhelmed them, nine months passed, filled with excitement and apprehension, until the fateful day arrived when Jeffrey's girlfriend rested in her hospital bed, their son was taken away for routine examinations, however, as hours ticked by without his return, Jeffrey's worry deepened, the routine had turned into an anxious wait, punctuated by unanswered questions, with each passing moment. Jeffrey's search through the hospital corridors grew more frantic, nurses offered no solace, claiming ignorance of the situation. When Jeffrey reached yet another unfamiliar hospital bed, a hand on his shoulder halted him, and he turned, his heart in his throat, to face an uncertain future as he felt a hand on his shoulder, Jeffrey turned abruptly, coming face to face with the nurse who had taken his son for the examination, are you looking for me, the nurse asked innocently, anger surged within Jeffrey when he demanded answers about his son's prolonged absence, it was supposed to be a quick check, but it's been hours, he shouted furiously, the nurse, taken aback by his rage, stammered out an apology, her wide eyes betraying her shock, they didn't tell you, she whispered fearfully, 
Raising her hands defensively, Jeffrey's anger simmered as he listened, guilt creeping in at the realization of his son's situation. Where is my son? He demanded, his voice laced with urgency, with a hesitant tone. The nurse explained that his son had been transferred to the pediatric ward for examination. Shock washed over Jeffrey at the notion of his son being moved without their consent. But the nurse clarified it was due to an emergency without a moment's hesitation. Jeffrey sprinted towards the pediatric ward, his heart pounding with fear and determination. Upon arrival, he sought out the nurse, who guided him to his son's crib along the way. Relief flooded Jeffrey as he beheld his son, safe and sound. Father and son shared a poignant moment as they locked eyes, a silent reassurance passing between them and then it took place. A strange expression appeared on the baby's face as it looked at Jeffrey, and Jeffrey returned the baby's gaze. Experiencing a sensation of separation, this is not my son, he asserted with a perplexed and determined expression on his face. After being taken aback, the nurse referred to the name of the baby that was written on the bracelet and insisted that it was consistent with Jeffrey's records, however, Jeffrey did not waver in his insistence on his assurance. He did not utter a single word as he promptly returned the infant to the nurse and continued his search when Jeffrey came to a stop at one of the cribs, he scooped the infant into his arms, and a wave of familiarity flooded his emotions, this is my son, he reiterated over and over again, as Jeffrey's intuition was confirmed, the nurse, who was terrified, arranged for a quick DNA test to be performed, a mistake had been made in the midst of the pandemonium that transpired during the emergency, and the identification of their kid had been mixed with that of another newborn, to everyone's good fortune, the instincts of a father were successful, and the family was reunited in a secure and safe manner. The connection that exists between a parent and his child is one that is immense and unbreakable. Once a kid is born, the father becomes one of the most important pillars in his child's life, providing unwavering love, protection, and support. This relationship begins at the time of birth, having children, on the other hand, is not without its difficulties. The following essay will discuss some of the most frequent challenges that parents face when they are raising their children, as well as the ways in which they can overcome these challenges in order to improve their link with their children, there are several important parts of parenting, including the management of discipline and conflict, the promotion of open communication, and the modeling of acceptable behavior. Despite the fact that every parent has the goal of bringing up children who are responsible and courteous, it can be challenging to navigate the boundaries of punishment, in order to effectively discipline their children, it is essential for parents to educate themselves on effective methods of discipline and to establish boundaries that are both obvious and consistent. One method of discipline that is proven to be effective is to concentrate on the natural consequences that result from that action. Through the process of guiding their children through the consequences of their behavior, parents are able to instill essential lessons. While simultaneously maintaining an environment that is nurturing and supportive, it is okay to temporarily take or put away a child's toys, for example, when the child refuses to clean up their toys. Similarly, if a youngster is not paying attention to their schooling, it could be beneficial to restrict the amount of time they spend playing or engaging in other forms of amusement. The ultimate goal of discipline should be to teach children responsibility and decision-making rather than simply to punish them. Discipline should act as a tool to teach these skills. Another tough component of parenting is dealing with disagreements that arise between parents and their children. There are several topics that can give rise to disagreements, including the selection of friends, academic performance, and the manner in which one spends their spare time. On the other hand, it is essential for parents to acknowledge that disagreements of this nature are common and to resolve them in an efficient Manner establishing clear limits and showing mutual respect for one another's points of view is an approach that has proven to be beneficial in resolving disagreements that arise between parents and their children. For instance, if a child wishes to interact with friends that a parent does not approve of, the parent can communicate their concerns while also taking into consideration the child's point of view and negotiating a solution that is mutually acceptable to both parties. In addition, it is essential to keep an open and honest line of communication with youngsters, as this can assist in the prevention of future problems. Communication is, without a doubt, one of the most important aspects of successful parenting. 
If parents want their children to feel comfortable expressing their feelings, concerns, and views, they should create an environment that encourages them to do so. Parents can assist their children in the development of critical conflict resolution skills by fostering open communication between them and their children. Above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.